And um, anyway, I, we, we left that day, whatever number it was there, 16 or 17, and we went into another court to support a Galway woman. And there was a similar situation there. My, my situation was, was with the Bank of Ireland, that there was a lady there, we were going to support her against the Allied Irish Bank. And she had subpoenaed witnesses to, to, to that, very, uh, that very day. And they hadn't attended, they hadn't attended court. And she had, she told the judge, Judge Dunn, that she had um, subpoenaed them on a previous occasion that they hadn't attended the court. And Judge Dunn on that day, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to say that that, you know, that that whole day, the, that whole day's proceedings on both cases, she couldn't believe that somebody that was subpoenaed to court or summoned to court could not attend. They are actually in contempt of court. When I went in before Judge Peart to, to complain Judge Beeney, and we have to be, have enough courage to name those people. Because, you know, I've spent nine years, I have prepared this, it will be in more detail, and it will be on, is it digital? Whatever, <laughs> around the world, okay? In more detail, there's a lot more detail of that, there's a lot more ba back up evidence to what I've said there. And if you don't have courage now, and deal with them now, they will be back to their old ways again. So it, it is an opportunity now for you to go forward. <coughs> I will continue doing a few more cases. I intend to do a better job on my own second edition of this book. We have linked up now with the universities, or at least for the moment, for one university in Canada. As of two evenings ago, I spoke to them. <coughs> And the lecturer there in the international uh, law uh, students, that has international law students there, and um, this book will be in the university, in this, uh, this particular university, next Monday before the law students. And it, I, I tell you, it was wonderful because it just happened by accident that this lady from Donegal, who happened to have a property stolen in Donegal, made contact with me and she sent me over, over, over all her files. And it is just as corrupt as this book. They carry on the fraud, corruption, falsified documents to have the, the, her mother's property transferred into someone, into another person's name in Donegal. It's very similar to my own case there and she was absolutely disgusted. And the reason why it got before the, into the university was it was a bad morning and she, she lived in one of the concessions in North Toronto. And she drove her son into the university. And they got talking to the law lecturer in question. And he asked for the book. So I promised them that I would send as many as they request. I, it, gave us, it gave us another opening. I lived in Canada myself for 10 years. And I intend now to get that into the, the law faculties in McMaster University in West Hamilton, where I lived, to the university in London, Ontario, and to named lecturers in law here in Galway and the other universities. Because a few years ago, I was asked to give a talk in UCC in Cork. And I went down there actually with a priest and they made a joke to me. I was talking to him and I asked for a talk. But anyway, I will return there to UCC with this and see what will they have to say now. So we are at a level now where I don't think we can advance it much more than, you know, when you have 35 of, how many judges have we in the, in the high court? Three. No, I have 35 in the book. 37. You mean no, high court judges? Yeah. I I four. Four. Is that right? Imagine, well, the, these are circuit court. I have here 35 circuit court, high court, and supreme court judges. And there appears to be, I'm trying to check out uh, one uh, judge 
Brian McCracken, you heard of McCracken, but you know. He's now, I am told, lecturing in law in some of the universities in Dublin, and I will get somebody someday, I'll catch up with him, and I'll say, Brian, here, read about yourself. They're going to have to, they have allowed to me a quarter of a million euros and 48 business sites. And you see there, we came up with this, we got this tip off the day that we were with um, Judge Pierce. Judge Pierce told me that there were other options open to me. And one was the Garda Bureau of Broad Investigation and the um, Criminal Assets Bureau. And the other one was to go before a judge to have your constitutional rights restored. And to the judge to make an order stating the consequences of, of those who will interfere with you or hinder you from having your constitutional rights restored. Now, <coughs> I first went to the Garda Bureau of Broad Investigation myself and a witness or two. <coughs> and um, I showed them the, um, my complaint to Judge Pierce, and they said, perfectly right. It is a problem for the Garda Bureau of Broad Investigation, which I let stand for the time being until I further what I'm at. I want to get this, prepare this for them. I then went before a judge, the two last judges named in this book, Judge John Cook and Judge Irving. And they behaved the same way as most all of the judges. They brushed me off, adjourned it until this, another week and another week. And Judge Irvine took a, was it a half an hour? She was she's sitting here, she said, oh. she took a half an hour, she took her chambers to read, to read my prepared documentation. And Judge Cook had told me that it was a serious matter because it was on holiday time in Easter and so And um, <coughs> Judge Irvine, her way out of saving her own hide was to send me back to Judge Cook. I said, fuck them, I'll go, or I'll go and prepare it. So now I want to go back 100%. I, I'm very satisfied that this is not that difficult to follow. We have a few very bright boys have read this and are going to follow up on and write next extracts of it for the for the website. And this lady in it's going to be very interesting. This study law lady, in, in what the students would have to say about this at the law lecture uh, lecture in Toronto. So what I have to say to you is this, I'm sick listening to people every day telling me to have the best case in the world and this nonsense. Anyone that phones, I believe that everyone that phones me has a case, no matter how smart it is. The detective said to me, well, there is 50 euros or 500,000. If it's stolen from you, it's still fraud. It's still theft and fraud. It's, it's, it's a crime. That is a crime. <coughs> so I believe that everyone has that you know that that we're in the, the justice of us now in court at the moment, and uh, one case is just as serious as the next. But what we have discovered, and they cannot deny it, and if they do, I challenge them any judge anywhere, of a, a, including the Supreme Court. They are aiding and abetting the conspiracy to defraud. They're, they're in actual fact, check. we saw up in, in that opinion, the other opinion was, yeah. when Judge John O'Hagan took on the case, the very first case we had in Johnny Gall, he took on the bloody case himself to beat, to beat the gallows here. He had to stay all day from 10 o'clock in the morning until after 6 o'clock at night, at night. And we were very lucky, uh, there was <coughs> two witnesses there, myself and Dora and uh, Daniel and them there. And we caught him out seven to eight days with his bully boy tactic, tactics and his screaming, you know, in an effort to frighten us. But he didn't frighten us. 
because, as we always do, we went home and we wrote the history of it. And I tell you, that was a rocky parish Sunday. We went on then to do another case for Michael McLaughlin, whose house, home was left to, to him by his father. His father left his house to him in his last will and testament, and they tried to evict him. They're doing likewise to a John Beatty in Wexford at the moment, and just going before they're planning on this bit for uh, uh, night of the other evening. We have, uh, we, have, we have some fantastic cases. We are going to have a few fantastic books to write after we uh, settle down after this, after we finish. This was a very tricky business because of the fact, now they didn't frighten me, that I was told that I would never get it published. But I do happen to have a few friends who are not Irish, and I was helped. And uh, I just played along with them and said nothing. And <coughs> I got a prize on 200. And uh, there, was a, there was a slight delay because there were serious um, threats against me. And the Garda Shihana that I knew, knew, they warned me, be careful, be careful. But they did not know that I sat down for nine years and had done nine years of seriousness and faced them on my own, in my own case on 92 occasions. I faced them at the circuit court and the high court and the supreme court. And every time I went to court, every time I walked out, I had a better case going in the next day because there were judges all the time. Because there was no judge, no judge was able to give me an honest and and, 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 and truthful uh, hearing. Initially, we, we got 5% of the time. I complained about it on the website big time. And all of a sudden, they said, because we're a lay litigant, we, have, we make special, we are obliged to give you extra time. And what happened then? They gave us all the time in the world. And they still went against us. And I felt in the end, we were going to make for them, that the only solution to the, to the problem was to <coughs> get this on the international stage, which it is now. As far away as St. Petersburg in Russia, I'm doing a case now for a gentleman from Moscow who was robbed the businessman in Galway by the Bank of Ireland and the legal profession. And he told me that I had to get it into the, they had translated themselves into the library in St. Petersburg. So there, I have it in, I got it to Tasmania, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, uh, the United, across Canada and the United States, across England, I, I, I hope to get across to Wales, I, 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 I find it busy, Wales and, and, and Scotland because there are a lot of people who lived here who have been clearly robbed by the bank. So um, it is true actually what the gentleman said in court in 2003, we have the most corrupt legal system in the civilised world and we do not have judges on the bench, they are political thugs and screwballs of corrupt politicians. And you saw there for the past few days, Judge, what's his name, from Westport? Yes, that's right, yes, no, and, and see what, see the crowd, if you, it is, and so. you must climb the reef four times. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the foot of a cigarette? It is photograph now we have the story. I have a, he's in the very first page of I this know, book. What did he, do you mind me asking if I can give it to us briefly? What did he do to that man from the Netherlands? Or can you, uh, he, he, he had him over. Well, you know, the, 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 the story is on the, is one of the first stories oh, is it, is it in the, uh, on the website. Hmm? 